Ben Fleming, typical golden retriever. He's polite, he loves to play, and he's great with people. He's the perfect family dog, except for one thing. Around the food bowl, he bites, and he bites hard. Uh, my wife had uh, been trying to get him to uh, to take something before we went out, and she reached down towards his uh, food bowl, and he attacked her. And then after that, we kind of thought back, and there were a couple of other kind of similar incidences that we sort of written off as being, you know, there was some explanation, but this seemed pretty unprovoked since we had the three kids, and he's a big dog, and we weren't really sure what to do. Uh, I think all of the family members were, were somewhat leery. Uh, just made it uncomfortable. It made us nervous, uh, not only uh, within our family, but when we had other folks come over. We really weren't sure what would happen. Uh, a lot of people we, uh, we talked to afterwards, their initial response was, well, he's just a dog, and uh, just put him to sleep and be done with it. Uh, that was a hard thing for us to do. Uh, he, Ben's become a pretty key component of the family. Uh, oldest son is, was 14, 15, and the uh, dog was pretty important to him as a companion. Um, none of us were really thrilled with the idea of just putting him down. Uh, so we thought he deserved at least a chance to see if we could fix the problem because it seems so out of the norm for him. Most of the time, it's just a big, goofy dog. There are a number of techniques we can use to counter-condition the food-possessive dog. All of these techniques get to the root of the problem by teaching the dog to feel less possessive about his food. One approach is to have so much food around that the dog no longer views food as a valued resource. This method works best when you have only one dog in the household. Another common approach is to teach the dog that good things happen to him when people are around his food bowl. One way to do this is to start with two food bowls. The first should have regular dog food. The second bowl should have tasty treats that you know the dog loves. First let the dog eat his dog food. Then when he's finished, put the bowl of treats down for him. A variation of this method is to drop the tasty treats from the second bowl into the first bowl while the dog is eating. These methods can be successful in just a few days, or they may take up to several months depending on the dog. We tried all of these techniques on Ben, and after six months, this is what we got. Things looked pretty bleak for Ben, but luckily for him, we opted for yet another technique. Instead of teaching him to feel comfortable with people around his bowl, we decided to teach him to sit every time someone approached his bowl, because with Ben, once he's sitting, he no longer feels possessive. With this technique, you start by giving the dog a bowl containing a small portion of his meal. When he finishes, you show him a treat and give it to him when he sits. We were hoping that if we did this regularly several times each meal, using treats that were much tastier than his regular dog food, that eventually we'd get a dog who anticipates the treat by taking his head out of the bowl while he's eating in order to get the treat instead. After six weeks of this, this is what we got. So after eight months, 
a number of different techniques and a lot of patience, then was finally safe around the food bowl. When we first started working with him, um, more directly, I was still pretty spooked working with him, and so it was tough. And when we worked with him for a while, it became very clear what could trigger it, and it became very scary when we saw it happen. I think it was really having to move out and spend uh, uh, six weeks with, uh, with Sophia was, was kind of the last shot. We were a lot more comfortable with him now. I think we're still a little bit cautious when folks come to visit. Uh, but uh, all in all, I think we're, we're pretty comfortable with him. And, uh, happy he could stay. <laughs>